Hey guys, so thanks for checking out my video. I just wanted to make this video to give you guys um, a more in-depth idea of um, how I um, design the Quartic in UART um, for the Arctic 7 FPGA, how I verified it, how I implemented it, and hopefully that gives you guys um, some good takeaways for your projects. So um, in this video, I just want to first overview the Quartic algorithm then go through how we can use a quartic to calculate sine and cosine of input angles. Then um, I'll give you guys a top level FPGA block diagram and I'll go through um, how um, it's all done. So first of all, quartic is a collection of iterative algorithms using shifts and adds in lieu of multiplications in order to compute vector rotations. So quartic algorithms are iterative iterative, which means we don't immediately use multiplications and just solve the equation in one step. We're going to use shifts and adds that give us incomplete solutions step by step so that we'll eventually approach the correct solution. So um, in this figure here, you can see that if we start out with um, this input vector here along here, and we want to rotate to this red vector here of theta, then what we're going to do is rotate by alpha zero to something that's greater than this red vector here. Then to get back down to it, we're going to rotate this way, but we still overshot here. So now we're going to go back and, you know, this continues for how many stages you want. However, you have to be aware that a larger number of steps yields better precision, but at the same time, you're going to either use higher area or latency, depending on your architecture. So if you have a pipeline quartic, then you're going to have um, greater area usage as you have more um, flip-flops and shifters and adders in there. Um, if you have, a, um, let's say, just a single um, iterative um, algorithm that, that has a very high initiation interval, then you're going to have a lot of latency as you wait, say, 48 cycles for you know, the quartic to be done. So now the question is, how do we apply quartic to solve cosine and sine of an input angle? So you might remember from your classes that um, this, um, these two equations here, these realize the um, rotation transformation matrix on an input vector x and y. You might also notice that if our input um, vector is a vector that's a unit vector in the i direction, then the result x apostrophe y apostrophe will be the cosine and sine of the rotation angle. Now the next question is how can we eliminate the multiplications so that this these sets of equations can be easily mapped to hardware without using multipliers? So I've done the first step here which is to factor out the cosine of theta term so that way it's easier to work with. So now um, what we want to do is um, we want to get rid of the multiply by tan of theta here. So how could we do that? So one thing we could do is constrain this theta value here so that it's always going to be the inverse tangent of 2 to the negative n, where n is the number of stages. So theta here is the um, angle that we're going to rotate for that particular iteration or step. So it's not going to get us, it, so theta isn't going to be the input angle. It's going to be a bunch of um, angles in a lookup table that we're going to either rotate clockwise or counterclockwise by until we get that target angle. So now if we have theta equals to this value here, then tangent of inverse tangent will negate and then we'll have 2 to the negative n, which you might recognize to be a simple right shift operation. So what we have here is now just a cosine of theta multiply here. So now how do we get rid of, rid of the cosine of theta? So the cosine term actually over a fixed number of steps in the algorithm, it's predetermined. So if it's predetermined, then what we can do is we can initialize the magnitude of the initial vector so that we can compensate for the gain. So remember that we started out with the unit i direction vector um, of x naught equals to one. But what if we make it slightly smaller to compensate for that gain? So what we can do is we can multiply it by one over cosine of theta naught, cosine of theta one, up until cosine of theta n. So that way we can um, neutralize all of those um, aggregating 
multiplying cosines. So now what we have is as we as the number of stages approaches infinity, then x naught will approach should approach 0 0.60725. And it's important to realize that depending on the number of iterations you have, this value will differ slightly. So with that, we've eliminated the cosine of theta term. So now we have no multiplies left, and it looks like our job is done. However, there's one more piece of the puzzle that we have to consider, and that is at each step of the quartic algorithm, do we rotate clockwise or counterclockwise? So in order to answer that question, we have to keep track of the angle. So the angle not, which is the input initial angle, we're just going to load it with the angle that we're going to eventually want to calculate. Okay. And then the new angle after that will be the old angle subtracted by the angle in the lookup table times the sign of our input angle. So telling us which direction that we need to go. So you can see here that if the sign of the angle, if it's a negative input angle, then we're going to add the, um, the uh, lookup table angle so that we could get the angle to approach zero, which is what we want. Zero is that perfect balance point because we're starting out with the target angle and we're going to approach zero degrees. And you can see here that we're going to rotate x and y such that it obeys the sign of the angle. And of course, there are other considerations with the quartic. So the quartic is limited to input angles in the range negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So if your input angle is outside, then we have to perform angle corrections. And you can follow these procedures here, assuming the angle is within range negative 2 pi to 2 pi. You may pause the video, but I'm going to go ahead. Finally, we'll move on to something more hardware-like. So here's the equation that I've showed you for a single stage without any multiplications. And as you can see, this can all be realized in some simple hardware using just add, subtract, shifts. So say x, y, and angle, um, they're entering into this pipeline stage here. Now, in order to calculate the next pipeline stage's values, we can just simply take the x values, y values, angles, add and subtract them, and then depending on the sign, we're going to select which, which um, deltas we want to implement. So finally, we have a block diagram for the Cortic FPGA top level. So what, I, what I've walked through was the main stages of the Cortic here too, but, um, but it wouldn't be a fun project if I can you know, interact with the FPG in some way. So in order to do that, I built some um, UART components like UART receive, UART transmit, as well as a messaging engine protocol, which is realized in UART RX message, UART TX message. So in my messaging protocol, um, I'm accepting UART packets in the FPGA, and I have four different instructions, a single theta, bursted theta, um, disable, and enable commands. So my instruction engines here support four different commands. And I also have an LFSR in each of them to, per, to calculate a CRC8. I also have a sync FIFO here, a synchronous FIFO, because the Cortex outputs are going to be really fast. This is a high-speed pipeline. So it's going to provide a lot of um, output cosines and sines. But the UART is a slower protocol. It's operating at 3 megabaws, which is still still the fastest, but but we're running at 100 megahertz in the FPGA. So we need to buffer all of those output values in here. So lastly, I wanted to talk about design, verification, and implementation. So I implemented all these hardware components using System Verilog, which which you can do for RTL, which probably isn't as popular. Verilog is popular, but but um, System Verilog is definitely getting there. So the components I implemented were the Cortic, the receiver and sender instruction messaging engines, CRC8, the UART physical layer. I also had a reset synchronizer in there because I don't want um, an input reset button um, signal to be metastable going into the FPGA.
I also implemented the FIFO. So I didn't use any external IP. I implemented these from scratch because um, cause it's fun to you know write system Verilog. And then finally, I wrote a custom UVM test bench um, that consists of um, an agent dedicated to the UR interface, um, as well as um, as well as a collection of components like drivers, monitors, and all that. Um, and of course, scoreboard with a DPIC Cortic model to you know check if if um, if my RTL is is wrong or not. Ran it on Quest's sim BCS, and I luckily achieved 100% success rate in coverage. And this includes um, all those cases like like those four instructions, and you know what if your angle's outside of negative pi over two to pi over two. So so luckily we got all that covered. And then finally we implement all this on the RD A7. So achieved using 100 megahertz frequency. Um, using an onboard USB to UART bridge, three megabonds. And why the RDA7? Well, it's probably one of the cheapest FPGAs on there, and I'm a recent college grad, so, so you know, you got the picture. <laughs> All right, so that that pretty much covers it. So um, if you wanted to check out my GitHub repo, click on this link here. You can even run the uh, simulation on EDA Playground. So all you have to do is click here, and you should be able to run um, all my files, which I have on there on VCS. And please contact me if you have any questions or have any suggestions or, or anything at all.